Hello everyone, Reza here. In this video, I will show you how to use the patch function in Power Apps. We will use modern controls to get the data from the user and accordingly create a new item or modify an existing item by using the patch function. We will take data validations into account, the screen which will have these modern controls, we will make it fully responsive by using a very neat trick. There is a lot to unpack in this video, so let's get started with it right away. Scenario here is a power app that is connected to a SharePoint list that tracks employee data. The list has various types of columns, single line of text, numbers, dates, and more. The home screen of the app shows the data from that SharePoint list in a gallery experience. The employee data tracks information about the department the user belongs to. We have a filter here on the home screen that allows us to filter users for that specific department. We would like to create a screen which allows us to patch data to our data source and patch allows us to modify or create one or more records in our data source. And the patch function is typically used in more complex scenarios. It gives you a lot more control over how you want to add or update data in your data source as against what a standard form control experience offers. I have a new button on the home screen that should lead me to an experience where I can create new employee data in my SharePoint list. And if I was to select a specific item in the gallery, it should take me a screen which will allow me to modify the information for the selected employee. So to do that, first step, I will go ahead and create a new screen. I'll pick the blank screen here. I'll rename the screen to employee info. In this, I will insert the new modern header control. I'll give it a logo, which is an image that I have uploaded in my Power App. And the title will be employee info. Next, I would like to create the controls so that I can take input from the user to patch it to my data source, which is my SharePoint list. In my SharePoint list, if I was to click new, this will open the SharePoint form so I can see all the different column types I have as part of this list. Title is a single line of text. To create that experience here, I'll go and insert the modern text control, the text property, to title, title a single line of text. So I'll insert the modern text input control that I'll position right here. Mode will be single line type text. I can even give it some placeholder text. This is my employee name. Department is a choice column. I'll add a text control once again. Text is department. It's a choice column, so I'll pick the modern drop down control. For the items property of the drop down control, since it's a choice column, I can use choices of my connected SharePoint list in my Power App called employee data. Dot the name of my choice column, which is department. And this will list out all the options. Next is age, which is number. I will insert the text input control. Adjust the width. Higher date, exit date are date fields. So I'll insert the modern date picker controls here. 
Salary is a number again. So similar to age, it's a text input control. Skills, which is a multi-select lookup column. The data is coming from a different SharePoint list. So for skills, I'll use the modern combo box control. Items property, choices of my SharePoint list dot my column called skills. So this will list out all the skills and I need to ensure that allow multiple selection is turned on. And finally active, which is a yes, no type column. So for this one, I will use the checkbox control and the label, I will leave it as empty. So at this point, if I was to preview the app, these are controls that I have added, which will allow the user to enter information. Now for the employee info screen, I will go and insert a couple of buttons. I'll position them here. The first button, the text, I'll call it as back. The type will be secondary. And on select of this, I will use the function back, which navigates the user back to the previous screen. The next button, I will call it as submit. So let's go to the home screen and let's begin with the new button. On select of this button, I want to create a new record. So here, first I will create a variable. I will call it where record type. I will set the value new. And then I will navigate the user to my employee info screen. So if I click preview, select new, it takes me to my screen. I select back and back to my home screen. Now, when I select an item in my gallery, it should also lead me to that same screen. So for the gallery, I have a property called on select. Here, I will set that same variable, which is where record type. This one I will set to edit. And then I will navigate the user to my employee info screen. I also need to set another variable before navigating and I will call this where item. This should have the context of the item that I would like to edit. I will set to this item. This item will give me the context of the current item that's selected in the gallery. So if I preview, I select the item for Matthew. Now that variable is set. And these controls needs to show those values coming in for that selected item. So let's try the employee name, which is a text input control. It has a property called value. This I will set to that variable, which is where item dot title. You can see it shows the selected item of the gallery, which was Matthew. If I go back, and select Emily, this will show Emily's name. Now, if I go back and select new, it still has that value set in that variable. So what I need to do here is when new is clicked, I need to also ensure right before navigating, I set that same variable this time to blank because I'm creating a new record. So now if I click new, you can see it's a new record, so it doesn't have an employee name. But if I go back and select any item from my gallery, it will show the details for that respective item. Department is a modern drop down control. This has a property called default selected items. I will set this to where item dot my column is called department age the value will be where item dot age higher date is a modern date picker control so it has a property called selected date 
this would be where item dot hire date exit date where item dot exit date salary value where item dot annual salary skills multi select lookup it's a combo box control so default selected items where item dot skills active is a yes no type column here i'm using a checkbox control it has a property called checked i'll simply use where item dot active so now when i make an actual selection it will load all the values for that selected item and if i click new gives me a blank experience to begin with now one thing you will notice is if i go to new the drop downs and combo boxes still hold the previous value so all we have to do here is every time we land on the screen which is my employee info screen i would want to reset those type of controls so on visible of my screen i will reset drop down canvas 1 and i would want to reset combo box canvas 1 so notice if i click new this time it doesn't hold the values but if i select an existing item it will load those values i'll click new now let's go ahead and submit the data and this is where we'll use the patch function so when submit is clicked use the function called patch data source that you want to patch to which is my connected sharepoint list employee data comma record which record are we trying to patch now if we are creating a new item we need to use a function called defaults and if we are patching an existing record we need to give the context of the item so for the record property i'll use a condition if where record type is equal to new i will use the formula defaults of my connected data source which is employee data else i am modifying an existing record here i need to give the context of that record which i already have in a variable called where item and right after this i need to give the details of the different columns that i would like to patch curly brace the name of my column which is title this will be my text input control dot value comma department will be drop down canvas 1 dot selected comma age which is number my text input control dot value now text input control will give me text age is a number so i have to type cast this by using the function value comma hire date will be date picker control dot selected date notice how intellisense highlights the different controls that i am pointing to on my screen with different color codes and it also highlights them with this border to give me a clear indication as to what i am patching against hire date next will be exit date exit date picker control dot selected date annual salary is a number text input control dot value type casted to value skills my combo box control dot selected items because it's multi select and finally active my check box dot checked close the record close the patch function i'll click format text this is what my patch function looks like and right after this is patched i would like to navigate the user to a screen that i have called success screen this screen simply gives information that employee data has been updated successfully important thing to note about the patch function 
is if you would like to get details about the output of patch. For example, I'm creating a new record. What's the ID of that record that just got created? All that information I can capture in a variable. Create a variable here called where result. So whatever response I get here from the patch function will be stored in this variable called where result. Where result will have all the details I need. For example, where result dot ID. So let's give this a shot. I'll go ahead and click new, new form experience. I'll create a new employee. When I hit submit, it will pass the data, sends me to the success screen. If I go back to the home screen now, I see my new employee. And if I look at my SharePoint list, it has gone ahead and created a new item in this case. Now, if I select this record, it will show me the details that I can modify. So let's say I update the skills and submit. Those details will get modified in my list item. So that same screen is able to create and modify items using the patch function. Now with modern controls, we also have a property called validation state. By default, it is set to none. The other value we can add here is error. And what this does is it puts this nice red border around that control to highlight that it needs attention. Employee name is a required field. So I want the user to fill this out. So for the text control, I will put a star symbol to highlight that it's a required field. And for the validation state, I can use the following formula. If is blank self dot value, if the value of the control itself is blank, in that case, you show error, else none. So if I preview, observe, it has the validation state as error. And the moment I put a value, it goes away. If I make this empty, shows me the error. And I can do something similar for any other column. Let's take department as an example. Validation state, if is blank, self dot selected, error, else none. The moment I make a selection, the error goes away. The moment I enter some text, the error goes away. If I go back, select an existing item, so there is no error, but if I was to make this empty, the validation state will trigger. Now, if you would like to give a message as well, I can simply insert a text control, full name is required, and this should only be visible if my text input control dot validation state is equal to error. So you can see it says full name is required and the moment I put in a name, that message goes away. Now if the validation state is error for any control, I do not want to allow the user to submit the form because I do not want to patch empty data. These fields are required. So to do that, when the submit button is clicked here, right before patching, first thing I will do is set where submit clicked to true. So I know that the user has clicked this button. In order to perform the patch and then navigate to the success screen, I have to ensure that none of the fields have their validation state set to error. So here, I'll add an if condition. If the text input control, which is my title control, dot validation state is equal to none and my department drop down control dot validation state is equal to none, only then go ahead and take these two steps, which is patch and then navigate the user. Now, when I click submit, I'm setting this variable to true. 
And whenever the user lands on the screen, so on visible of the screen, I need to ensure that I am setting that same variable to false. And for these controls where I'm checking the validation state, I can add one extra logic here, which is if where submit click and my condition. And I'll do the same thing for department. So now if you observe, if I click new, none of the validations are in play yet. But when I click submit, they will come into play. And this validation scenario, you can expand. As an example here, these are my three mandatory fields. Now age, if I enter text, a validation triggers, it has to be of type number only. And the way I did this is for validation state, I check a couple of things. Is that button clicked? Is this value not blank? Or is this value not matching digits? So now here I have to include numbers. I pick a higher date. I pick an exit date, which is prior to higher date. I try submitting. Here's another validation that triggers. Exit date must be greater than the higher date. All I'm doing here is checking to see if this date is not blank. And if the value in this date, is it less than the value in the higher date date picker control? If yes, throw the validation state as error. Responsive design. You want to build an app that can work on any device type, screen size or orientation. Now the screen that I built here, I did not use any responsive layout containers, I simply added my controls on the screen. So if I was to view this app on a mobile device, you can see my form is not responsive. The first thing I want you to do is go to templates and pick a template called scrollable screen. Now this template has a special control called canvas. In this control, it comes with a card and we can add additional sections here. Each section that I add, you can see it's a scrollable canvas in finite scrolling. Now the first thing I want you to do here is go ahead and delete all these cards. So it's a simple canvas with no sections added. Remember, I want to build a responsive screen. So what I will do here is I'll go and use the screen layout with the responsive containers like header and footer. In my header, I'll add my modern header control. In my footer, I'll add my back and submit button. And in the main section is where I will use that scrollable canvas. Simply go and copy that control select the main container, right click and paste that canvas. Now the canvas control, I've set it to columns four. I have eight different columns for which I created a set of controls. So here I will add eight sections. And all I have to do now is simply start copying these controls and placing them in these different data cards. And this is exactly what I have done in this app. Here's my canvas control and here are my data cards. And for each of these data cards, make sure that you set with fit this property to on. Let's preview the app. This is on a widescreen experience. Let's go to a tablet experience. Let's go to a mobile experience. You can see how the columns are automatically realigning themselves. If you enjoyed this video, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And thank you so much for watching.